Hi guys, we're going to work an integrated problem that uses IR and mass spec. I've gotten some requests for more mass spec problems. And before we jump in, I want to address this. Mass spec out of the three characterizations that we're learning here, IR, mass spec, and MR, mass spec is probably the one that um, I'm giving the least attention to. I want you to know how it works. I want you to be um, familiar with the nitrogen rule, um, what an M plus one peak uh, is, or recognize that it comes from carbon 13, recognize how to, um, how to identify bromine or chlorine containing compounds, um, and, and have a, a general understanding of fragmentation, but I am not going to ask you to solve whole structures using only mass spec. Um, in fact, the, this practice set here, and I'm, I've posted it for you guys on eCampus, um, is good practice to get used to working with mass spec um, and to recognize some key features. But in our exams, especially because they're going to be mostly, uh, essentially all multiple choice, um, those Questions that you see in the old exam that I've posted or that you saw on quiz on the quiz for chapter 14, that, those are the kind of questions you're going to see on the exam. Um, but again, I want you to have as much practice as possible. So I want to work one of these problems with you. There are five integrated problems and then answers um, at the end. And so I want to show you how I would work through this. Now, when you do not have something like NMR, uh, most of these uh, problems in this set have more than one uh, potential answer, and that's okay. So if I were giving this kind of problem and grading it, there would be multiple. There would be more than one right answer, and we'll we'll see um, how that comes into effect as we work this problem. So I'm going to jump to the IR because usually that's the easiest thing to pull stuff out of. So right away, I see just a big, um, broad OH peak here. It's broad. It's around 3,300. It's likely an alcohol. Breeze agrees. He is, <laughs> he is being vocal for today. If I draw my line up from 3,000, though, compared to some of the other IRs that we have looked at, it's kind of a, a missing um, peak here, right? There's, it doesn't appear that there's any sp3chs. And this OH seems to go a little bit farther than you typically see. I'm, I'm going to keep in mind that there is likely some sp2chs here. So I'm going to keep that in mind. Um, there's likely going to be some unsaturation here. Uh, because we do have something that butts up right at 3,000. Now, there's no carbonyl. There's no triple bonds. Um, you could dive into the fingerprint region. You'd probably learn some interesting things there. Uh, but I'm going to keep going and take a look at the mass spec. Now, the first thing I want to alert your attention to is the parent, the molecular ion, the M plus peak. Um, it's also turns out to be the base peak, right? That guy right there. Um, that's going to be the most abundant uh, fragment. In this case, the most abundant isn't a fragment. What I want to point out here is you also have a peak at M plus 2 that is approximately a third the height. So ding, 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 this tells me that there is chlorine present. And if I zoom in to the x-axis, I will see that the tall peak is at 128 and the shorter peak is at one, uh, 130. All right, now from here, I'm going to start putting together what the possible chemical formula could be. Where you want to be careful here is not necessarily to look straight to the uh, periodic table because the periodic table gives you a weighted average. What you want to remember is that there is a chlorine 35 and a chlorine, sorry, chlorine 37. So there is no 35 point whatever it says on the periodic table. It's going to see the specific isotope. So 
when I'm first uh, kind of coming on, uh, figuring out what could make this up, I'm going to choose the lower uh, molecular weight parent, the 128. And so if I choose 128, I have to be very thoughtful here. It's the chlorine 35 that gives me the 128. So I'm going to subtract that. Because I know there is one chlorine. If there was multiple chlorines, then this would be more complicated, right? Because you would have the possibility of having two 35s, a 35 and a 37, or two 37s. So it would get a little bit more complex. Since I have two, an M and an M plus 2, that is 3 to 1, I have one chlorine. So 128 minus 35 is 93. Now, I also know that I have an OH, so I'm going to subtract out 17 for the O and the H, and that is going to leave me with 76. Now, okay, so I have my chlorine and I have my OH. There's no indication that there are any other um, heteroatoms. There's no indication of nitrogen. There's no indication of bromine. Um, and so I'm going to assume that the rest is made up of carbon and hydrogen. So I'm sure there's an elegant way to do this, but I just kind of guess while I'm, uh, what, I, what I start off with is I just take 76 and divide by 12 just to see how much carbon could be there. And it turns out 76 divided by 12, I think is like 6.33 something. So... I start off thinking about, okay, well, if there are six carbon, then that would be a minus 72. Is there enough? Because there needs to be some left over because we do expect there to be some hydrogen. And that leaves us with four. So that leaves us with four hydrogen. So my formula is going to be C6H5 because I have one from the OH, Cl, and O. And this is a chemical formula that could give me this particular molar mass. So from here, to help me determine a structure, I know some of my pieces. I know I have an OH and I know I have a chlorine. But I don't have NMR, so I don't exactly have all the patterns that I need to figure out what the carbon's doing. So what is one more thing I can get? Degrees of unsaturation. So I'm going to take this formula, and I'm going to go 2 times 6 plus 2 minus the 5 hydrogen and minus the 1 chlorine. Oxygen doesn't, doesn't play a role in this calculation, and divide that by 2. What I wind up with is 4. I have 4 degrees of unsaturation. Now, that on its own could be a mix of double bonds, rings, triple bonds, but there's no indication that I have a triple bond. So I'm going to assume this is all double bonds and or rings. Now, there are various ways that we could put this together. But I also want to take into account that I don't see any evidence of any sp3chs. So I'm not going to make, um, I don't know, some sort of ring system like this. Because that would leave too much possibility for sp3chs. It's also just weird and unlikely. Let's get rid of that. Now, if you were starting, and this is probably hopeful, let me just say where you should be thinking. You're going to get various information and practice problems where you're going to see benzene rings over and over again. A benzene ring gives you four degrees of unsaturation. So if my six carbons have four degrees of unsaturation, this is a pretty good place to go. There is some information in here that I don't ask you to memorize, but that indicates a benzene ring between 1400 and 1600. Um, the only other option really would be is if you did them all in a straight chain, you would have to put some of these double bonds right next to each other. And we're going to learn in chapter 16 that this isn't particularly stable. It might give you some sort of reasonable um, structure that fits what we've learned. But 
a benzene ring is the most likely. Now, that is six carbons. So that takes, oops, that is not what I meant to do. That takes care of all of our carbon. It takes care of all of our degrees of unsaturation. And there's five hydrogen. So I know that I've got uh, an OH and a CL, and then I've got four more hydrogen. So I'm just going to place them around the ring. There isn't anything in the IR or the mass spec that would really help us determine if the OH and CL were next to each other or if they were in 1,3 or 1,4. So all of these, right, so or the 1,3 or the 1,4 substitution, those would all be really good reasonable answers. And that is one way that I can use mass spec, right? So is, is just working through these problems. Don't get too frustrated if you don't get the perfect answer here. These are really just helpful in, in getting some experience, getting a little bit more comfortable looking at an, uh, at a, at a mass, sorry, at a mass spec. There are likely some fragments that could be useful to you in uh, searching this. I have a feeling, um, I don't see a benzene fragment, so I'm not sure, um, that that would have jumped out at me. But from this, if you could identify that there was chlorine, if you could identify the uh, chemical formula, then you are doing a great job here. And if I go over to the answers, right, I see chlorophenol is my kind of best guess here. And um, that that's as far as you could really get. Now, you've got some... You've got four more problems that you could use uh, to practice working on mass spec. I will make sure that there, well, there are already solutions here at the end. So you'll just have this one document and that should give you plenty of additional mass spec practice.